Happy New Day. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. Y'all know how I do. I just disappear for months at a time. And then just pop back up like nothing ever happened. Yep, that's that's my thing. So, um, I wasn't expecting to um, do a video, and that's usually how it goes. I, I don't ever expect to do a video or plan it for real. Um, it just kind of comes out of nowhere. And when I thought about how much time has gone by since my last video, you know, I started to question if, you know, I was just done with YouTube or, you know, am, am I just about to take a super long break um, again? And maybe this time it would be longer. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that the energy was just not presenting itself for me to do a video the way that I would feel comfortable doing a video. And I have actually recorded several videos in this time period of me being absent from YouTube and they just didn't get uploaded. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> but usually I record a video, have no problem, you know, uploading it. But it was like this stop mechanism. So maybe the videos will get uploaded another time. Maybe my energy will say, let's revisit those videos and put them out later. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But I have been experiencing more changes. Um, that's usually, you know, how things go. That seems to be like the pattern, especially the last couple of years. Um, I make a few appearances, do a few videos, and disappear for like a long period of time. And usually within those time periods, I'm just... It's just a lot of change taking place. Um, and I, I feel like I'm in constant gestation periods. Um, I feel that whenever I, I can't produce uh, content or be creative on this YouTube platform, um, there's some type of gestation going on to where like my energy is building up for some, you know, moment in the future that I have no idea when it's going to be, what's going to happen within it. I don't know. So I just have to trust in my body being in resistance to producing um, and trust that if my body is encouraging me to sit still and not move, or to only put my energy in certain areas outside of dealing with people and the public, um, that's just what it is. And, uh, you know, it's going on a few years now of me being uh, more and more obedient to how I feel and, and my inner guidance. And um, it just consistently gets refined. I, I find myself becoming more and more um, accepting of the many different changes that happen in life, uh, the, the unexpected that is always coming and can show up at any time. Um, just overall um, remaining like in the flow and, and not holding on to anything, you know, living in a state of, like, conscious impermanency, um, which my life has, like, always been like that, but now I'm, like, consciously, like, don't cling on to anything, don't try to keep things in your life that may be dissolving or, you know, slipping away, just trust, you know, and, and not not get too much in your head um, when it comes to what is actually taking place because a lot of times you can't figure it out in the moment. A lot of times you have to let things happen and then reflect on it later 
once it's completed whatever it's doing and then you gain a sense of clarity that you you know you won't really get right then and there when something is happening so um there have definitely been a lot of uh a lot of new things that have happened and there are also a lot of things that are still the same um and i still feel like i'm waiting and being patient for a next a next phase in my life which um i actually have have looked at from knowing how cycles work within this this matrix that we operate in within this um within like our biological cycles and um you know i've looked at my time period being on youtube and um i started in april 2013 at the age of 28 uh, and I am now on my way to being 35. So, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the, the seven year cycle time frame that we as humans are always dealing with in life. Um, some of you all may know that the first seven years of a person's life is like, that's the foundational um, that's the foundational st stage that will determine how a person plays out the rest of their life. And, um, I've talked about this through the human design, um, perspective, and there are many other systems that, you know, that talk about this, this seven year cycle, um, time frame that, that we go through in different situations. Um, a lot of people will have conversations with me and share with me the time periods of like their jobs or their relationships or, you know, just different things. And there's always this correlation to seven years um, or even the starting of something breaking down being around the three and a half year, four year mark, you know, which is like that middle, that peak of a situation and a lot of people they know in the third year that something is just not right this isn't going to work out but it takes them another three to four years to get out of it um it, it's it's fascinating it's fascinating to see this seven year um time period just always playing out and in me looking at how I started YouTube and where my level of consciousness was compared to now, I am com a completely different person. Um, and I have had some very intense moments of wanting to just like shut this whole thing down because even though there are people that are, you know, still finding my channel for the first time and, you know, I'm, still getting like new subscribers and i'm just like wow okay people are they're still rocking with me or new people are liking the old videos new videos whatever um it's still weird for me because if i if i had back then the consciousness that i have now my youtube channel will be completely different um when i started youtube I had no awareness of like what YouTube is today. Like that was not, that did not exist in, in my reality or my consciousness. The only thing I saw YouTube as was a platform, a free, a free platform <laughs> to where anybody could, you know, if you had a Google or Gmail account or whatever, you automatically would be connected to a YouTube channel for free and you could record a video and put it out and and people would eventually watch it 
now it's like the YouTube world is something that I can't even relate to. I understand it, but I am not connected to the way in which people are using YouTube now, which is, you know, people are using YouTube to literally make a living. And I didn't start off like that. And I know that I'm not built for that. Like I'm not built to have YouTube as like my sole focus to make money and to make a living because I have a independent business, you know, doing sessions and, and classes and teaching and all of that for people who are paying clients. So even though I didn't have that in the beginning of YouTube, my YouTube uh, career, <laughs> um, I evolved into that, and but still never looked at, oh, YouTube can be my my focus to make a living. Um, so I started YouTube from, from the place of, first of all, being an introvert and not being very social, but knowing that I was having experiences that could be useful and helpful to other people, not knowing who those people were, but I just knew that whoever was meant to hear my messages or hear my stories, they would eventually find me. And that's the only thing that I was thinking about. Just, hey, I have things to share and I want to get it out and I don't want to pay for it. But as far as like now where it's like, you know, there's a script of uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, thumbs up this video. Like all of that is just like, why don't I feel comfortable saying those things? Like, I don't know. Like I just it would feel weird for me to tell you all to do that because I just feel like as humans, if you want something to eat, you know, no one has to tell you to get something to eat. If you want something, you just do it. If you resonate with my energy, you're going to automatically subscribe. Or if you feel like you want to express that you like this video through hitting the thumbs up, you'll do that. Um, if you want to be notified when I upload a video, you'll do that. Um, I understand it's a part of uh, promoting yourself and all of that, but my channel was more of an autopilot type thing. You know, I never tried to push anything. I never tried to force my channel to grow. And I have no problem with the fact that it's going on six, seven years that I've been on YouTube and I'm not at 3,000 subscribers yet. Like, my feelings are not hurt behind that because, again, YouTube is not my priority. Um, so looking at where I was at in the beginning, how I evolved, how my awareness changed and my focus changed, from being more general in the things that I talked about um, and also sharing more of my personal stories, which I feel like that'll always be a part of, you know, how I express myself. But now, you know, I have put in going on five years now of time, energy, learning, investigation, research, into the human design system, which deals with unique individuality. And in the beginning, I didn't, I didn't have that. I didn't, I didn't have the, the detailed foundational awareness about individuals like I have now. So the way in which I could pump out videos, you know, multiple videos a day sometimes and talk about more generalized topics my body is in resistance to that because when I get questions or I get inquiries or complaints or things that individuals bring to me, yes, it may be a question or a topic that many different people are wondering about, but it doesn't feel right to me to give a generalized answer when I know that the, the answer to this general question for a person number one is going to be their their solution is going to be different from person number two person number three and so on so 
my focus is on dealing with individuals and when I deal with groups dealing with a group atmosphere but also taking time within that group setting to acknowledge the individuality of each person that is in the group so that as a group we are aware that we're here together but we're all uniquely different and we want to be aware of that so that we can acknowledge and accommodate and honor each person's uniqueness um it's hard to do that with youtube um because it it could be hundreds or thousands of people watching a video that i put out but it's going to be people who relate people who don't relate and it's like i can't really put in the type of energy and um and an ability that you know that i have to the collective the way that i can in in a personal one-on-one -on -one or you know one-on group situation um so that has just naturally taken my um my focus and attention off of youtube because i it's it's like i can't really show you all you know where i have honed my skills and where i have really gotten deep and anchored into my lane and the thing that i'm good at which is human design and helping people to understand how they're wired how they're designed to operate and get the best out of their bodies um learn how to undo and decondition from ideas and and patterns and you know just things in their life routines habits that are not for their best and highest good and um there are some ways in which i could you know put information together to put out to the collective to where i can focus in i can zone in on on certain groups of people that have the same characteristics and focus in on that to where when i do put that information out is going to be a a large population that to where all of what has been explained it resonates with them it actually fits with that aspect that i'm focusing on so for instance um projectors generators manifestors reflectors you know humanity is broken down into those four types so everyone on on the planet is one of those four types so i could put out a video on generators and all generators will relate to it because it's characteristics for that large population but there's still underneath the large group of generators in the world there's still specific individual aspects that i want to get into with with people who are looking for um answers looking to be self-empowered looking to understand what they're dealing with in their lives and um that's where you know my business comes in and focusing on you know where i can get the most satisfaction for myself and um really put in the the energy and time where it benefits all parties involved the most i've made some videos in the past that have been more of a kind of like a warning but more so encouraging people to really get in tune with their bodies get in tune with your inner guidance and your inner authority because you're going to need it i've talked about how we are moving into a new cycle um and i call this point within our existence the flushing of the toilet so some some of you all may have watched that video some may not but we are ending a 400 plus year cycle that started in the 1700s it focused the the theme of this cycle that we're ending that will officially end in the year 2027 this cycle this cycle's theme 
deals with support. It deals with tribalism, hierarchies, marriage, um, aid structures like the educational system, the um, the medical the medical system, um, your uh, oh goodness, what's what's the name of it? Uh, welfare, so like you know the the uh, EBT cards and social security 401ks um all of that you know family i don't know if i said that already um bargains this idea of you know loyalty you do something for me i i do something for you um which is also a part of that marriage energy so it's you know it's the till death do us part all of that all of those themes are are ending so we're going from a more communal, tribal, network, community, family-based energy that deals with support. And we're moving into the new era, which starts in 2027, which is all about individuality, selfishness, and every man for his or herself. So because of like, we're right at the end, we're we're watching everything fall apart. We're watching everything that we were taught from our parents and our grandparents, our traditions, our beliefs. Um, we're, we're feeling and watching what we've been programmed with because all of us, you know, um, yeah, everyone that's, that's still, that's being born up until, you know, we hit the new cycle in 2027, all of us are still, being born with the program of the previous era, even though it's ending. So there, there's a lot of people that are still driven to, you know, hold on and to follow what is coming to a close. And as we move into this new cycle of individuality and selfishness and every man for him himself, um, we're, we're seeing that it's going to be harder and harder to depend on other people. So there, there are people right now who don't know a life outside of having mommy and daddy around or having sisters and brothers and family available to support them and to be there for them and friends and people in their network. There, there are people who have been um, conditioned and have lived a life to where the idea of being by yourself, the idea of being alone is terrifying. And what's interesting is, is that when I look at my design, my design is actually perfectly set up <laughs> for the next era. So my life of, of being isolated and being alone and knowing how to be comfortable in my aloneness and not expecting anybody to support me, not expecting for anyone to help me or to be there for me, that is something that is like second nature. Like, I don't, I don't know anything else. So even when people do come into my life, there's a, there's an aspect of me that's like, you know, I, you know, I really don't even care if you disappear because I'm not, you know, I'm not even, I live a life of impermanency. So it's not that I don't care about people or that, you know, I don't enjoy people. It's just that there's nothing in me that will ever get attached to a person being in my reality. Like I will never expect for another person to always be there because I just, I don't understand that. That's not how I've lived even as, as a child, you know, I was by myself a lot. Um, and it, I don't know. It's like I'm I'm more wired to deal with individuality and um, even the selfishness aspect. Um, I'm just more wired for that than community and family and tribalism. So it's going to be people who just they just aren't going to be able to. Um, 
I guess, make the transition. They're, they're, they're going to be people that just won't be able to function if their support system dies or if, if, you know, their relationships break up and, you know, they, they never had the idea to prepare them themselves to have their own foundation or their, their own ability to take care of themselves. And, um, with anything, you know, everyone is not meant to move at the same time or have the same awareness at the same time. So there are people who, who have asked me, you know, because my lifestyle has always been like fascinating to some people, um, just simply because of the fact that I don't, I don't live like the majority of people that I know, like I don't answer to anyone, um, on a daily basis. I don't, uh, I haven't worked for anyone. Um, I can sleep when I want to, as long as I want to, I can get up when I want to, I can move around the way that I want to. I, I don't have anybody to consider outside of myself until I feel like considering them. And majority of people I know have lived the complete opposite life to where they, a lot of them are getting to the place to where they're actually overwhelmed with having to deal with people because that's been their whole life. And now they're getting to the point to where they're starting to break down. They're starting to feel the stress and the anxiety and the depression and the pain of just not being able to get five minutes to themselves, not being able to have um, just some time to do what they want to do. And now they're yearning for it. And, um, you know, it's just interesting because it's like, I'm in a place to where I feel so secure within my ability to know that I can be alone, I can be isolated, and I will always put myself first. And now I'm in, in a place to where I can be more social. Like I, I can give more of my time and energy to other people because I know that I won't end up in some type of situation or I won't forget that I, I come first because I can see that without me putting myself first and making sure I'm okay, I have nothing to offer the next person. So by me living this life of, of saying, I have to be at my highest capacity and, and thinking properly, feeling good in order to have any type of um, beneficial interaction with you, that, that makes me feel that w when I do connect with others, it's, it's a much more fruitful experience. And, um, unfortunately, most people do, do not get to experience that. So I don't even know if I've, if I even said the question, but the, the question that I've gotten from people is, is a, is a life pursuing self-empowerment worth it? Is it worth it to want to be self-empowered? Is it worth it to want to um, be a better version of yourself? And as with anything, it depends on you. And for me, I can actually look at my design and see that it would have been very difficult, whichever route I took, it would have been very difficult for me to not have in some type of way, naturally moved and aligned with something that dealt with self-empowerment because of just how I'm genetically set up. Um, so, so there are going to be some people that if self-empowerment doesn't bring them, for instance, like a financial opportunity, they will, they won't want to have anything to do with it. Um, and then there are people who can relate to what I just said about just moving, just moving into it, just looking at the world and 
seeing that I can't live as a lost, unaware version of myself anymore. I have to figure out who I am. I have to figure out how to make better decisions. I have to figure out how to stop letting my friends and family and the outside world control me and have this hold on the way in which I am spending my time and energy in my life. Um, so a lot of people get to a breaking point, you know, that a lot of people just, you know, they have to get to a, a place of crisis in their life um, to where, you know, they may have to end up in a hospital um, or somebody close to them ends up in a hospital through or from neglect or from um, something that deals with a, a constant, a constant um, disregard for your individual needs and a constant uh, lack of self-care. So again, it's, it's about you, the individual. Um, I feel that if a person has to question if self-empowerment is worth it, then they may not be at a place to where they have gotten fed up with not being self-empowered or not feeling like they can set the proper boundaries so that they don't get used and abused and manipulated and taken advantage of. Um, because it's just certain things that it just hits you. It just hits you to where it's like, I just can't do this anymore. I, I can't continue to live like this. And um, I've said this plenty of times for me, if if something how do i say it <laughs> if if something makes me feel stupid or like i'm going to die that's 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 all i that's all i need to feel f for for it to click for me it's like okay i'm doing something and i'm feeling stupid or i'm doing something and i feel like like I have a knowing that if I continue to do this, I will perish. Like I will die earlier than what I need to. That's, that's enough for me. I don't, you know, I don't need a whole lot of trial and error. I, I definitely go through a lot of trial and error with different things, but the same thing over and over and over again, that's showing me that it doesn't work. I don't, I don't need a whole bunch of time in, in any one thing doing it incorrectly to realize that it doesn't work and to realize that I need to stop because I'm just, I'm feeling real stupid about myself. Um, so someone like me, of course, is going to say that self-empowerment is definitely worth it because if you don't, <laughs> if you don't know how to listen to the, the one thing that is going to grant you this experience with which is your body not your mind is is there but your mind is not physical this is a physical world that we live in and without your body you can't have the amazing spiritual experiences that you have or the the um, non-physical experiences that you have because when you transmit what happened in in a in a spiritual experience in your life it's still through your body if you didn't have a body no one would know that you had a, a spiritual experience um because you wouldn't exist to the next human so you need this body more than anything to experience this materialistic physical world and if you don't know how it functions if you don't know what type of vehicle you're in and how to listen to it, what to listen to, um, then you can't really recognize when there is information or instruction or conditioning from the outside that is steering you in the wrong way. Even though without knowing that, there are so many people that can still say that 
when, when they do something that goes wrong, they can refer back and say, I felt like something was wrong or I knew I shouldn't have done that. So even with them not knowing exactly what to listen to within themselves, they still were able to recognize there was something inside of them that let them know to not do whatever it was that they did. So as we move closer into the new age, the new cycle of individuality and selfishness, you, the human that's viewing this and listening, if you want to be here, if you want to experience, you know, the beginning of this, this new era that we're moving into, you, you might want to get in tune with your, your body and get in tune with your inner guidance because this transition is not easy. It's not easy for most people. A lot of people are already going crazy because they don't know what's happening. They're not able, they, they don't have the awareness of why things are changing. You know, they, they just don't get it because they've been conditioned to be a certain way and to think certain things that are very limited. And these changes are destroying all of that. These changes are presenting brand new situations that they had no preparation for. Their parents, their grandparents, whoever taught them, did not prepare them for the changes that are now coming and will continue to come. So the best thing, again, that you have is yourself and your body and knowing how to listen to its intelligence. Um... Self-empowerment is the new wave. You look at the younger generation, um, the, the people that are, you know, teenagers and younger and even the ones in their 20s. Um, you can see this energy of not following the, um, the herd, not, not following you know, not being sheeple, you know, of course, that's, that's still a large part of what we're still experiencing. And the younger people are being influenced greatly, but they're not going to get stuck in things for long periods of time, like my generation and older. Um, even my generation, you know, we're recognizing, you know, we're, we're like the eighties babies. We're like right in the we're in a place of like being connected to like what is now being looked at as like ancient energy. You know, just me looking at, I was looking at my baby pictures the other day and they're on Polaroids, <laughs> you know, like that's ancient, that's ancient now, you know? So it's like, wow, you know, I'm in my thirties and like, I got a lot of ancient energy, you know, going on when I look at, you know, what is available for new babies coming in right now. So we're like, we're right there in like, you know, almost being old heads, <laughs> um, but, you know, still being young enough to take advantage of the new energy and being at more of a ripe age to benefit off of it. Whereas the newer generation, they're just coming in and they're just on fire, you know, like, and it's, you know, they're doing a lot. They are that, you know, me and some other people in my age group are like, okay, they, we just going to let them do what they do. You know, we're just gonna, <laughs> you know, just get through this thing the best way that we can. But, um, you know, just being right there in the middle to have a little bit of wisdom, but also be open to learning and, and gaining from the newness and being able to take advantage of it. I feel like it's a good position. But at the same time, there are also people in my age group that, you know, are getting like major diseases, you know, getting very sick, having major health problems and health problems that, you know, we're used to our grandparents getting, you know, people that are in their 50s, 60s, 70s getting. And it's like, you know, my age group is getting them. We're in our 30s and early 40s and we getting hit with stuff to where it's like, Oh my God, are we, you know, are we going to make it? Are we going to make it to middle age? We don't know. We don't know. But 
this is it's natural when it comes to the the ending of an age into the beginning and to be where we're at in the flushing of the toilet I mean, I feel that this is def is definitely natural for it to be like this upheaval of like sicknesses and diseases and people just, you know, like chaos, confusion, just all types of stuff going on. So, and it's not to say that even in you being self-empowered that you won't like end up in a situation like that, whether, you know, you still don't live very long due to some freak accident or a disease or whatever because it's just so much stuff coming at us but i look at it as how however long i'm here and i i know i've mentioned this before however long i'm here i just want to feel good in my body i just don't want to suffer in this thing like i don't want to you know neglect myself to where, you know, I I create problems that create pain and create, you know, discomfort in this organism that is deteriorating. It is, you know, like every day that I wake up, I know I'm a day closer, day closer to the other side. But, you know, that that's just a part of life. And I just want to experience this gracefully and feel good while I'm doing it, feel like. I'm making the right decisions, not feel that I I can't set boundaries, I can't say no to toxic people in toxic situations. Um take take con not control but responsibility. Like that's one of the biggest things that a lot of people have a hard time with. Take responsibility for your reality. Understand that whatever you experience, even if it just looks like you're just a pure victim of it, you have to take responsibility for the fact that there is something in you that attracted that. Even if it was innocent, even if it, you were unaware of it, even if it was, you know, you just being completely ignorant of the way that you're, you're designed. There are so many things that I have never attracted in my life that so many people I know have attracted. And I've questioned that, like, why have I never experienced those things? Good things and or positive things and negative things. But whenever something happens, you may have your moment of feeling like the other person did it to you, but you don't want to stay in that because every time you point the finger, every time you blame someone else for you not feeling good or for you getting hurt or for someone you know, just making you feel less than yourself, you're giving them your power. And that goes directly against being self-empowered. That goes directly against self-care and being able to be at your highest capacity. So when something happens that, that I don't resonate with, that doesn't feel good, I always can see where I am the starting point. I am the originating starting point. Excuse me. I am the originating starting point of however this situation turned out to be. And I know it's hard for a lot of people to, you know, even begin to start thinking that, that way because most of us have been taught to live of pointing the finger and, and blaming and saying that oh well you know I didn't do anything that person did it to me you're you're you just you just pretty much became powerless because you're saying that that person is in control of how you move how you feel how you think you're you're saying that anybody that comes to you and does something that is in situation because you're going to refuse to take control you're going to refuse to look at that situation and say do i want this person who's doing something mean or stupid or, or ignorant or whatever do i want this person to ultimately have control over how i conclude this situation or how this situation ends and um 
the harsh reality of what we're experiencing now in the world and what we will continue to experience as we move forward is realizing that nobody really cares about you. Even the people that say that they love you the most, the people that say they will never leave you, the people that say that they will always be there for you, don't believe them. Don't believe them because I look at it like this. The fact that at any given moment somebody can die that's enough. That's enough for me. That's enough for me to realize anybody saying to me that they will always be there for me, that they care about me, that they love me. People can care about you and love you to, to their capacity or which is whatever they think or feel love and caring is. But when you be, when you become self-empowered or when you start moving into knowing you through going inward another harsh reality outside of realizing that nobody cares about you <laughs> is the fact that nobody knows you because once you realize all of the things you didn't know about yourself and what you need as an individual you realize that even your parents there may be th certain things that they know about you but even your parents the people closest to you that you've known for years you're, your husbands, your wives, your mates, your children, the people that are supposed to know you inside and out, you realize they know nothing about you because they don't know what you need. They don't know how you're wired. And you'll see that a lot of the people that are in those categories that are closest to you, you'll see where they've given you advice, where they've encouraged you in certain areas, where they've told you what to do, things that deal with their influence on you, you'll see that they did not have your best interests at heart because they didn't even know that what they were telling you to do or what they were encouraging you to do was going directly against what you actually need and what you're designed for. And this is the story of so many people's lives that come into human design and realize like, oh, I'm a projector. Or, oh, oh, I'm a generator, or I'm a reflector, or, or whatever. I'm a this profile, or I have this inner authority, or I have an open heart center, or a defined solar plexus, whatever, whatever it is. People come to realize how they're wired, and they're like, all of this time, you know, my mother tried to force me to do this, or I got a divorce because my husband hated that I did that, or that I didn't do this. Even though when you look at your design, you realize, oh, that was the reason, you know, because of these aspects in my design, that was the reason that I couldn't keep up in these areas or I was overpowering in these other areas. And the person that you created a family with, the, the, the people that you've known for years, they never knew and neither did you. So it's... <laughs> It's liberating to come to understand who you are and um, start moving in a direction of self-care and self-empowerment. But at the same time, you know, you, you will find yourself disconnecting from people. And I've mentioned this before. Um, so again, if you're a person that's, that's trying to figure out is it worth it or a person that's like scared to you know, know these detailed aspects about yourself. If you're still hesitant, if you're still in resistance, then I don't feel that it's for you. It, it may not ever be for you, or this just may not be the time because you may need to get to a point to where you don't have a choice. And that's, again, that's where some people get to. They get to a place to where they don't have a choice anymore. They have to move into per pursuing a life of self-care and self-empowerment or else they know that they're going to die. They know that they don't have much time left if they don't start reversing things. And then you have other people who they don't need to get to a place of suffering. They don't need to get to a, a breaking point. They can look at something, it makes sense, and they're just ready to get on it right then and there. 
because it's, it, it, they would feel stupid if they didn't because it just makes too much sense. So this new age, um, you want to be as, as ready as possible because I just feel that the heaviness of ending one cycle and beginning a next, I feel that it's j just that transitional energy is designed to eat you alive. It's a transition. So is, you know, people are just n not going to make it because their bodies are too broken down. They they've neglected themselves too much. They've been programmed too heavy by other people to where it may send them into shock. It may, you know, cause them to have a mental or nervous breakdown if they try to change, if they try to, you know, reverse and start to undo everything that they've learned. A lot of people just are, don't have the capacity to start, you know, to start new within one lifetime to where 20 plus years have been operating outside of yourself and then you know you want to start operating as yourself within this energy of like collapse <laughs> collapse and transition you know that that's a lot to deal with um genetically physically emotionally spiritually like it's a lot um but again if it's for you then it's for you you'll know it's for you and you'll just be moving in it. If it's not for you, then you just may find yourself stuck. And that's just what, you know, your life will be. And others, you may be stuck for a little while longer and then eventually, you know, the universe might shake some things up to where you don't have a choice and you just get to getting, <laughs> you know? So it, it's, It's all, it's all about, it's all about you. Um, and that's it. It's all about you. <laughs> um, I am, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on. Um, I, I gave you all like a, a update on, you know, what I've been thinking and, you know, just, feeling these cycles and um, I definitely feel the ending of like this seven year cycle from, you know, my Saturn return at 28 and now, you know, like in the last, you know, last bits of um, my seven year cycle from 28 as I approach 35 and ending energy is real. Like, like, this is the first time in my life to where I have consciously been aware of the seven year cycles and while I'm going through them. So, um, just looking at, you know, just how it's been more difficult these last couple of years to produce content and how I've been more in like a retreat and disconnected, you know, mold when it comes to dealing with this platform and, and focusing more on the business side behind the scenes, um, I attribute all of that to, you know, just the ending of this seven year cycle of, you know, when, when I first just came into a new awareness, lifted that veil and started to see beyond, you know, the third dimensional world that we were living in. And, and now, I've anchored into, you know, who I am and what I want to do. And this new energy that's coming in for this next seven year cycle, it's like, I can feel a new level of refinement to where it's like, okay, I'm not the people that I was dealing with, you know, in this last seven years, it's like, unless, unless they're reaching out to me and give and I'm responding to them it's like, I can't even connect anymore. And it's not anything negative. It's just that in the beginning, 
I was more open to dealing with more people because I didn't have a focus for real. I was, you know, just exploring a wide range of topics and ideas and experiences. Now it's like, I really have something that I have, I'm valuable in and people know that. So if people know that and, and, they're not connecting with me for where I'm valuable in, then that, that connection is, is just dissolved because it's like, I'm not the person that you connected with before. And all of that, you know, it, it comes with these cycles and, um, you know, even this platform, this platform, it has to, have something new come out of it, which kind of started last year when I, you know, started the self-empowerment classroom on Learn It Live and started doing group sessions and, you know, just started expanding the business. And that's just what has to happen. Like, there is no other option. It, ha it has to grow into something new. Um, the, the phase, the, the first six, seven years is coming to a close. And same thing with my biology, like my biology is really in alignment with where my value is and, and what I bring as a teacher, as an investigator, as someone that, you know, um, brings foundational detailed information for the purposes of empowering individuals and, and helping people to become a better version of themselves. So that was always a plan with Free Your Mind to Shine from the very beginning, but I didn't really have tools for real. I had information that I experienced and that I shared, but now, you know, I'm actually dealing with real, real tools that are practical, they're logical, they're for anybody from all walks of life, whether, you know, no matter your, your race, your gender, um, your uh, religion, your sexuality, it doesn't matter who or what you are, like, it's something that applies to everyone. And it's my thing. It, it's something that is natural for me. It's something that, you know, I can, I can do all day if I wanted to. And that's where my focus has to be. And from there, you know, from me finding what I'm good at, that is directly connected to my personal growth and the way in which I connect with people and the way in which my network expands and the way in which I'm going to provide my time and my life force energy to others. So it, before I was kind of like giving it away because I didn't have like a specific direction. Um, but now I'm not doing that. You know, I'm, I value myself. I value my time. I value my energy and I know where I am of service to others. I know where, um, I can be beneficial to others. And I know that I need to work with and operate with people who understand balance and understand reciprocity. Um, so that no one feels that they're putting in, you know, they're, they're putting in energy and putting in work and not getting anything in return. And, um, that was a part of my trial and error, you know, throughout the last few years, and which was, you know, just giving my energy away freely and in the end, not feeling like anything was gained on both ends and nobody did anything wrong because, you know, if, if somebody, you know, like, takes a bag of money and, and throws the money up in the air, people aren't going to think about like, oh, I shouldn't trample the next person to grab these hundred dollar bills. Like it's, it's free money. It's free energy and it's good. So why wouldn't people, you know, like abuse the next person or fight the next person or take from the next person, you know, or tackle or trample the next person for good free energy, good free money. So that's how I looked at myself. I was, 
you know, very enthusiastic. You know, I was just, you know, ready to connect. Hey, you know, I'm wide open, everyone. Come and, come and get me, you know, and I don't blame anybody. You know, I don't feel bad about anything. I had to learn through doing that. I had to learn through experiencing people who will take full advantage and whether they had the awareness or not, just understand that if you're not going to be self-empowered, if you're not going to protect your energy, if you're not going to value yourself and set boundaries and know what you're worth, don't be mad when somebody takes advantage of you, manipulates you, uses you, abuses you. Don't be mad. Especially if you're someone that is coming across information that can help you to be a better version of yourself through setting boundaries, through um, learning how to say no, through being able to look at yourself and see where you need to apply more self-care, where you need to, instead of going out and, and running around with the next person, where you need to say, you know what, the way my body is feeling, that would not be <laughs> a good idea to do that. So it's up to you. It's, it's your responsibility because, again, as we move into the age of individuality and selfishness, you're going to find less and less people who care about you and your well-being who are not going to be considerate of you, who are not going to even stop and think, you know what, let me check on this person. Let me see how they're feeling before I request their energy or request something from them or before I you know, let them know I need you or demand something from you. No one is going to care about you. So it's up to you to get in tune with yourself, get in tune with your vehicle. This, this thing, this body, this is what you got for this experience. And if you're somebody who knows that you've been neglectful, you haven't taken care of yourself. You've been, you know, uh, Stuffing yourself with, you know, toxic foods and substances, alcohol, you know, drugs, whatever. Um, if, if, if you are still in any type of way coherent <laughs> after all of that, you, you might want to, um, you might want to rethink and, and maybe look into some ways to where you can, you know, uh, break that addiction. If that's what it is, um, slow down on the consumption of, those toxic substances, whatever it is that you're dealing with that you can honestly say has, has been detrimental to your health and has been a form of slow suicide. And in these days, it's, it's actually a, quick, a, a quicker suicide because things are just moving so fast. Um, just, you know, just, just consider those things. If you have any interest in breaking away from that toxic lifestyle and moving into something that is much more productive, that makes you feel better, that makes you feel lighter, that makes you feel more empowered and allows you to have a better experience on this plane while you're here and, and not feel like you're suffering in a body, in a world that is just like toxic. Just my thoughts. Um, and yeah, so I don't know if, uh, I don't know when you all are going to get another video from me. I have no idea. But um, I'm glad that, you know, my, my energy became available to connect with you all and to give you all an update. And hopefully this message was um, positive and encouraging and motivational. And, um... Yeah. Oh, my website, freeyourmindandshine.com. Um, you can get free blueprints, free individual blueprints, and also free partnership blueprints. Um, I offer human design sessions for um, individuals, for couples, for parents and their children. Um, yeah, check out the website. And, you know, if you have any questions, you can email me. I'll put the email in the uh, description box. Um, yeah. 
And, you know, if you resonate with my energy, if you resonate with my, my message, then you already are going to do what you're going to do. So I don't need to tell you. Um, and that's about it. So I hope you all, for those who um, celebrate the holidays, I hope you enjoy your Christmas and um, your New Year's. And, you know, for those that, you know, have, have gone out and, and spent a lot of money and maybe even sacrifice, you know, paying your rent or your car note or some priority, you know, things in your life. Um, I hope that as you're playing catch up, you know, um, once this holiday season is over and, you know, you look back and you're like, you're not feeling too good about all of the money you spent. I, I hope that, you know, it doesn't take you too long to catch up. And I hope that, you know, you don't have to go through um, <laughs> too much, too much, uh, you know, uh, after, after time of um, dealing with, you know, your, your decisions, your holiday spending decisions. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, decision-making. That comes with self-empowerment. Learning, learn, learning how to recognize when, you know, other people's scripts, other people's, you know, pre-made holidays and, you know, things that you didn't come up with, things that, you know, don't really align with your energy and your finances and what you got going on you know, making better decisions for yourself, being self-empowered, that will help you to recognize that, oh, maybe I should not. Maybe I should not um, try to, you know, uh, indulge in, 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 this, in this script, in this, you know, this, this thing called the holidays. Um, Maybe my life just isn't aligned with it right now. You know, may, maybe I can, you know, later on in the year or maybe next year sometime. Maybe maybe when I'm in a place to where, like, I got it like that, I got money like that, or I can afford, you know, to give some. I, it's okay to give people gifts at other times of the year. You know, it doesn't have to be their birthday. It doesn't have to be another holiday. Like, you know, there there are ways to still feel the spirit. You know, um, you don't have to force yourself to be in the spirit of something that you just don't, the spirit is not really there. You know, it's not existing for you. And because then you'll be in a fake spirit. You're not, you're not really going to be happy about what you're doing and um, you're going to suffer behind it. You know, you're going to suffer longer term consequences uh, playing catch up, you know, trying to catch up from the money that you spent. So, you know, not to, uh, not to burst anyone's bubble, but it's just interesting how many people complain, complain a, about, you know, how they feel after the holidays and how, you know, it's such a short lived, you know, happiness, you know, once it's over, it's like, everyone's glad that it's over, but you know, they're, they're long-term complaining about, you know, all that money they spent and all of that energy they, they lost running around and stuff. So just some thoughts, you know, we're, we're moving, we're just moving into newness. We're moving into new modes of thought, new ways of, of doing things. And, you know, um, you know, it's nothing wrong with, with, with change because it's going to happen anyway with or without you. So that includes the things that, you know, the matrix is, it's keeping in our face year after year that we know deep down inside, we just, we really just don't even want to, but it's like, we feel like we have to, because that's, that's what everybody is doing. That's, that's what this person said and these people are doing and, you know, just, so yeah, that's all I got. I did kind of go off into a little rant, but. Um, thank you all for tuning in and watching Free Your Mind to Shine. Until next time.